Welcome to Inside. Today we're chatting with David Stahl, president of the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. David has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, David, for joining us today. My pleasure, Mark. So the conservatory occupies a very unique space within the arts ecosystem in San Francisco. Talk about the work of the Conservatory of Music. My pleasure. Uh, the conservatory actually will celebrate its 100th birthday in 2017-18, and that's a remarkable thing. It's one of the great institutions in higher learning in the world. And, and it makes it one of the oldest conservatory of music in the United States. Really, and there's no question about that. And, and it's been a leader for a very long time. And you find our graduates certainly playing in all of the great ensembles here in San Francisco at the opera, at the symphony, the ballet orchestra. You see the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, the New York Philharmonic, literally in all the major orchestras in the US. But you also find them in places you might not expect. You find them as executives at Google and Facebook. You find them as founders of Blue Bottle Coffee. You find them as the president of the Steinway Corporation. So uh, it's truly a comprehensive degree program in the sense that people are prepared for success. But its focus most definitely is preparing artists to work at the highest level. And uh, it's done that for a very long time and done it extremely well. But as we look towards the 21st century, uh, what it means to do that well has changed substantially, as all things have in the economy of this age. And so the exciting thing in San Francisco is being in a position to act on those possibilities. What does it mean today in contrast to what it has meant in the past to provide an excellent music education? Today what it means is, is that certainly at a core of that is that students have to have a phenomenal technical proficiency. That's been true for a very long time. But what is now true is they actually come to us far more advanced than they used to be. Uh, with the presence of technology, with the number of highly skilled musicians who are teaching in the world, the fact is young artists walk in the door with quite a bit more under their fingers, if you will, relative to the technique. But what it means to be a musician today, though, is very, very different. Uh, versatility is probably at the top of that list. Uh, not only do you have to be a magnificent orchestral player, but a wonderful soloist, a great chamber musician, you have to be great in the recording studio, but most importantly, you have to be truly entrepreneurial and imaginative. Uh, you're likely to be leading or participating in an ensemble that is newly born as you leave school, that has its own management structure, that is uh, performing and recording uh, across the United States of America and the world. Uh, these new small ensembles that emerge fully form out of the conservatory environment are not uncommon now. And the reason for that is that uh, students today really have to be able to not only direct their own careers, but really understand how to harness technology in that activity. So as they are now creating new ensembles that are engaged in new repertoire that play in very different venues, they're just as likely to be say, at the sound box at Davies Hall, and the next week they might be at a, a club somewhere, you know, in the middle of the city. And the ensemble might be 38 players when it's at Davies, it might be 16 when it's at the club. Uh, these, that sort of change in how music now is meeting the community, engaging the community, that's real. And the fact is, those opportunities are pretty extraordinary because we see students recognizing that as they build an audience, they create a following and social media, the presence of a website, the capacity to get music out over the internet, vis-a-vis, -vis, say, YouTube and downloads, what have you. While on one hand it turned the record industry upside down, what it also did at the same time is liberate the capacity for young artists to bring their work to market. But it also requires that versatility that you were referring to earlier. Now, since people are so musically aware because of the accessibility of different forms and because you're seeing young artists uh, being able to uh, very flexibly move from form to form, from style to style, the actual response of the musician has to be very sophisticated. It is no longer uh, so, um, musicians are no longer uh, so able to afford the luxury of concentrating in one particular space. Right, and that's, that's a perfect description for it. And the reality is that even if they, for example, several of our students have won major workers of positions recently as, as, as current students. But let's take the San Francisco Symphony. Uh, right now, if you're playing in that orchestra, you also are gonna to expect to play in the sound box. Right which is an entirely different environment you're making music. The acoustic is generated brilliantly through electronic means by a Meyer Constellation system. 
you have two stages, possibly three, you're in what almost feels like a nightclub environment, you're playing repertoire, frankly, that is not the orchestral repertoire. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, that would have been unimaginable. So when we look at the opportunities, which are really quite significant today, both in live performance, vis-a-vis uh, -vis recording and technology, working in the studio, in game music, in film music, uh, and the fact that this is a full-blown degree program. You know, the conservatory is the only accredited standalone conservatory west of the Mississippi River. And so for us, we see a degree as really equipping somebody to be successful for life. And so when we think about what the degree has to achieve today versus 50 years ago, it's that not only do the musicians have to be prepared to play in these very, very different circumstances, but their education should be comprehensive in that they are able to harness their skills toward any endeavor later in life. We've had not only graduates, as I said, going into music, we've had graduates go directly to the medical school out of the conservatory. You know, and we're equally proud of those, for example, like the quartet of ours who last week won the Naumberg competition, the most prestigious chamber competition in the world. And uh, you know, just a couple weeks before that, you know, one of our students is doing really well in her first year of medical school. From our point of view, those are both tremendous success stories about what the school does. So let's unpack that academic sure. uh, program and talk about how students come in. And as, as you say, many of them come in with a, a great deal of proficiency. Right. But now they have to step up their game. Exactly. And the reality is, is because the world that's waiting for them expects their game to be much higher, and it needs to be to be successful. It's, it's really that simple. So the students we see today have, I would say, far better technical proficiency on the instrument, and that is something that everyone has observed in the industry, if you will. But when we look at how we then transform those students, which is precisely how we approach it, it's to say, look, there are four key areas where they really have to develop themselves. One is artistically, the second one is intellectually, their cognitive skills, the third one is professionally, their business acumen, their capacity to act within the context of the business world, and the fourth one is individually, and by that we mean their capacity to know themselves and to take risks. That risk-taking is in fact a major part of this enterprise, but if, if you don't actually give students the environment in which to practice that for real, waiting four years until you graduate them is frankly too late because we just kind of push them off the precipice in May and say, now you're an entrepreneur, go out and meet the world and make it happen. Um, you know, some students will do that just fine, but most are terrified by that prospect. And the fact is, is they're very gifted and very capable, so they're more likely to, say, join a private sector industry job rather than think about really advancing their own interests vis-a-vis -vis starting their own organization. And you have a lot more in common with a professional school that has a narrower range of topics. You cannot go from, in a liberal arts school, you cannot go from music to history to right. political science right. to economics. Absolutely. And that's, that's not something we seek to change. Right. Because we think if, we, if we did try to change that, um, at, what that would really mean is a disservice to the student because it would cause those conversations to be less candid. Um, no, the, you know, our program is actually the inverse of how many colleges work in that instead of moving towards selecting a major, what happens is, is we say at the beginning, okay, you're going to have a professional focus. And these halos around that focus are the liberal learning and the professional studies around business. And the reason for that is because it's highly verticalized. So it's achievement-based from the beginning. But what you get from that are students leaving with the fact when they think about work, they think about being as achievement-based. And that's a very different mindset than many graduates typically come out of a college because the college has never established that culture as part of what the institution does. One of the things that I think is interesting is that you start off, e even in your descriptions to and uh, your responses to my open-ended questions, you started off talking about the student basically thinking of themselves as an independent business, as an entrepreneur um, in, in music, but also in life. How, as the student progresses through and, and becomes a senior and, and perhaps considers a, a graduate education, um, how do you help students uh, find employment? So we have terrific connections, uh, I mean, throughout the U.S. and even in China and elsewhere. And um, students, as they are looking at this next phase of life, they also use the winter term opportunity, say, to intern different organizations. And uh, we have interns that will be at the 
the symphony, at the opera, in New York. We've had in our technology program, we have a whole slew of students working down at Sony. We have a, a scoring program for video game music, film music, and sound design. Uh, these students learn to code. They're writing for games and what have you before they graduate. And frankly, they're swept up really quickly, and they're already interning in those sectors. So the great thing is, is we're small. You know, we're just over 400 majors. It's a very, very selective school, but when you have a student population of that size, you know, individually you can really accommodate student requests in ways you can if you're 4,000. You can't possibly offer the contacts, the resources you have in a school like ours to a group that's, say, much larger than 400 because it just becomes an impossibility. So the chance for students to, and we're not limiting them to what they might want to do, um, you know, they know full well if they want to be an orchestra, they're going to have to win that job by audition. But we have students, for example, who may really be interested in entering a competition. Well, they might use that six weeks to literally bury themselves in that particular work. And they're just going to say, look, you actually do have the talent to win a major competition. You're right there. And what you should do is immerse yourself if you really want it. So the spaces and time, the winter term experiences, allow us to for each student say, you know, what are the strengths and aspirations you've discovered about yourself since you've been here? Because they are all different. No one student has a life path or even a life ambition that is frankly identical to another. They just don't. <laughs> you know, they may think, I want to be involved in the opera world. When you start to really dig into what they mean by that, it's often a very different life they imagine for themselves. So that interaction with students and then linking them to the opportunities that we have is key. And, and that's really how we handle it. Well, David Stoll, thank you so much for sharing with us the work of the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. And thank you so much for your insights. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.